Hi everybody, JJ here, Bull to the Bust. It is Sunday, May 24th, 2020, and I hope everyone's having a good Memorial Day weekend. I hope you are getting some sun, getting outside, getting exercise, being with family, being with friends, or just doing whatever it is that you love to do. I hope you're getting a chance to enjoy this weekend. A lot of economic news we wanted to jump into. I may not be putting out a report tomorrow, so we're going to try to fit a lot of news into a short report today. And again, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. We're going to talk about Bank of America. They actually are admitting that markets are fake. Now, we've known that for a long time, but it's interesting to see Bank of America admitting that. Next, we're going to talk about 90 countries. They're begging for monopoly money from the printers. We're going to talk about what that means. Also, 40 million unemployment filings in eight weeks. That now surpasses the 37 million filings that we saw during the great financial crisis over that 18-month recession period. So we are dwarfing financial crisis numbers here in this recession slash depression that we're likely going into. And finally, the Vegas reopening. Is that going to kickstart the economy? I'm going to try not to laugh talking about that. Let's get started in the news here. CNBC article right here. Central banks are creating fake markets, Bank of America strategists say. Well, we've known that for a long, long time. If you've been on this channel, you know how manipulated the markets are. Now, when I first started this channel, I had a lot more naysayers saying, no, I'm just making this up. The markets are not manipulated. They're not allowed to do that. Well, no, people are realizing that it's happening, and now it's it's pretty much mainstream knowledge. So you see articles like this more often now. It's, it's basically admitted. It's out there in the public sphere that these markets are completely manipulated. It's no coincidence that the Fed balance sheet uh, increases exponentially at the same time we see these huge stock market rallies. Now, is the Fed going in there and buying stocks directly? Well, that's debatable. You know, we can't audit them. There's no way to prove or disprove that. But the analogy that I give is your wife tells you not to buy any alcohol because you have a drinking problem. So you say, okay, I'm not going to buy any alcohol. Your wife leaves to go to work. She comes back. You're intoxicated. And your wife's upset. She says, I told you not to buy any alcohol. Why are you intoxicated? And you say, I didn't. I gave it to my buddy. Uh, gave him some money. He went and bought some for me. He brought it back and I drank it. So technically, I didn't buy any alcohol. Okay, so there's your oversimplified way of explaining how the Fed manipulates the stock market. Uh, yes, we try to keep things very simple, very basic on this channel. Sometimes we'll go into detail. Hey, but let's keep it pretty light this weekend on Memorial Day, okay? Uh, so yes, again, the markets are fake. It's manipulated. Um, and ask yourself, why is there such a big incentive now to manipulate these markets and keep the bottom from falling out. Well, I think you know we've got something coming up this November of 2020. And, uh, you know, there's individuals holding on for dear life here. So expect more of the manipulation. Let's do a quick shot of the markets here. This is the Dow Jones. This is out of markets.businessinsider.com. And we do see we recovered about 50% off of those mid-March lows that we saw when the sickness first started shutting everything down so the Dow Jones on the way to recovering uh, let's take a look next at the S&P 500 similar pattern right there this is a one-year chart so we've retraced about 50 percent of that correction that we saw starting in March here's the big one here this is the Nasdaq this has recovered almost all of the correction that we saw since March that is a huge huge recovery during a time when the unemployment numbers exceed the Great Depression. So think about that. Unemployment numbers that dwarf the Great Depression, and yet we're still seeing this market recover on this scale. Let's also take a look at a gold chart. Gold holding steady, holding that 1700 level now for several weeks. We've dipped below it a few times, but gold showing great strength during this time. So even though a lot of people have lost their jobs, there's still a flight to safety. And this tells us that a lot of big money is flowing into the precious metals. Next, 90 countries beg for monopoly money from the printers. Headline here out of Al Jazeera. 
more than 90 countries request IMF bailout. Now you can argue that IMF, well, they don't technically print the money. So then why are so many countries requesting a bailout? Well, is the IMF giving out some sort of special money that's backed by gold? No, it's all fiat funny money that was printed out of thin air, created out of nothing, backed by nothing. And this is what the entire world has become. All these countries now, they're begging, they're begging for some of this monopoly money that was printed out of thin air. Just think about that for a minute. Countries in debt to people or groups of people that create money out of thin air. It's simply amazing uh, that nobody's talking about this. It's some article on the internet that probably only has a few thousand views. Uh, this money situation should be what most people are talking about, but no, instead they're going to talk about the television show that they watched or uh, the great deal that they got off of Amazon. And I'm not against talking about those things. I'm just saying that at some point, let's talk about these real important issues here of this monetary system situation. Uh, next, how bad is the unemployment? Well, 40 million filings in eight weeks, and those are just the filings. Keep in mind, a lot of millions of people were not able to file. They didn't qualify for unemployment. Uh, this number is actually probably close to 55 million right now. And to put it in perspective here, I got parentheses. Now we are exceeded by 37 million the entire 18 months of the Great Recession unemployment filings. Here is the headline here out of CBS that breaks it down and they only tell you about the 40 million that fall under the official definition of unemployed. Remember, when we look at the non cherry pick number, the real number, we're going to see over 50 million and we'll keep you updated on the shadow stats report. I think that's going to be coming out here in a couple weeks showing what happened in the month of uh, May since we're now at the nearing the end of May right so just take a look at these numbers and just ask yourself you know what are these people going to do all these people that lost their jobs they have debt that they need to pay payments on many people with student loan debt credit card debt most people are carrying some sort of debt so most of these people that you see in these numbers here unemployed they are now going to be dependent on the government stimulus check and it's sad that we're here and no, I don't blame people for taking the check. Take as much as you can get from the government. They print it out of thin air. It's backed by nothing. But we should also take this time to ask ourselves, as taxpayers, when we are working, we are paying taxes, how is the taxpayer going to continue to pay for all of this deficit spending, all of these programs, all of these bailouts, all the stimulus? How are we as, as we as taxpayers supposed to pay for this? Do you really think that when jobs do start coming back whenever that's going to be right maybe six months from now maybe six years from now do you really think people are going to be able to pay enough taxes to actually pay for the spending well no the system is going to collapse at some point that's what we need to be prepared for we haven't seen anything yet we are just now entering the woods and uh, this woods is going to be filled with a lot of wild animals that are going to be dangerous and we need to start preparing and protecting ourselves right now all right, so I think this is just getting started. We may see a slight recovery, but this uh, notion of the V-shaped recovery, as I've said here a few times, it's not going to happen. And that brings us to our next bullet point, the Vegas reopening. Will it kickstart the economy? Well, many people are saying that that is going to be uh, what's going to get everything kick-started, right? You've got the restaurants reopening. You've got Vegas uh, select casinos, not the entire city of course, but select casinos, they're going to be enforcing uh, social distancing. The dealers are going to have their mask on. They're going to be wiping down all the tables and rotating out those decks of cards at the blackjack table. Headline here out of AP, Disinfected Dice, Las Vegas Casinos Ready to Roll. Now, Bill Hornbuckle's out there. He is the chief executive president of casino giant MGM. And he says, quote, we all know what we've gone through for the past 10 weeks. No one is having fun, unquote. All right, so his solution to this crisis is that we need to open these casinos. People can go out. They can have fun. Um, it's going to kickstart the economy. People are going to be spending. The dealers are going to be making money. Uh, the casinos are going to be making money. And somehow that's going to kickstart this grand recovery. Well, no, I've got some bad news for you. 
Of course, the executive officer of MGM is going to say that. That's in his best interest to get people out to his casino. All right, but ask yourself, is people rolling dice and pulling the lever on a slot machine and uh, picking up these plastic chips from a table, is that going to kickstart a grand economy that's going to really uh, prevent this crisis? Well, no. I think you know the answer to that. All right, nothing wrong with having a little fun. Um, if you are, though, try not to let the house take all of your money. Leave some maybe for a, a Taco Tuesday or something like that. All right, but that's all for the support, everybody. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you being here. Appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Please subscribe and like if you haven't done it already and come back for more. Hope you stay well, everybody. Bye for now.